Real estate investment trusts have been in the bear market now for over two years with the Vanguard real estate ETF dropping by about 25% since the beginning of 2022. But despite that, most REITs have actually kept growing their dividends. Most of them hiked their dividend in 2022, 2023 and will again in 2024, even despite their low valuations. I think that this is the ultimate proof that REITs are doing quite a bit better than what the market gives them credit for. The reality is that the rising interest rates really haven't had any major impact on most REITs because they have low debt, the average LTV is today only around 35% in the REIT sector. Then secondly, debt maturity is also historically long at about 7 years and the debt maturity is also well staggered. And then thirdly, most REITs invest in property sectors that are still enjoying rent growth in 2024. And then finally, REIT payout ratio is also historically low at just around 70%, which allows REITs to retain a lot of capital to buy additional properties and grow their cash flow. Hey everyone, this is Yulsi. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I want to talk to you about three REITs for which I give a strong buy rating because they are heavily discounted and I expect them to hike their dividend later this year. But before I get into it, could you please do me a huge favor and click the like button that helps me a lot to grow this channel. And then secondly, also subscribe if you don't want to miss any future updates on these three companies. The first read I'm going to discuss here is called NNN REIT. Its ticker symbol is NNN. This is really an easy pick because it's one of the oldest net lease REITs and it has a 35 year long track record of dividend growth, surpassing even that of Realty Income, which is one of its close peers. It's been able to grow its dividend so consistently, even despite many crises along the way, including the dot-com crash, the great financial crisis, as well as the pandemic. And so you may ask yourself, what is its secret? And it is simply that it's targeting defensive net lease properties that have very long lease terms that then provide consistent and predictable income and then combines this defensive investment strategy with a fortress balance sheet with low debt and long debt maturities. To date, net lease portfolio is stronger and better diversified than ever with a clear focus on more defensive categories like quick service restaurants, grocery stores, dollar stores and grocery stores as well. Moreover, its leases are quite long with 10 years left on them on average and it enjoys 1.5% annual rent escalations, which may not seem like much, but remember that we are dealing here, here with triple net lease properties, which are unique in that the tenant is responsible for all the property expenses, including even the maintenance. And as such, this rent growth is true growth that really falls down to the bottom line. And since it's very consistent and happening every year, it really adds up over time. Then on top of that, the REIT is also retaining a lot of cash flow. Its payout ratio is today one of the lowest in the REIT sector at just 62% of its AFFO, which is the equivalent of the free cash flow in the REIT sector. And so this allows it to keep buying additional properties every year to grow its cash flow as well as its dividend. Then its balance sheet is also among the strongest in the REIT sector. It has a triple B plus investment grade rating. Its LTV is just around 30%. And it has exceptionally long debt maturities at about 30 years. Even then, the surge in interest rates is still a bit of a headwind for the company. It will lead to growing interest expense in the coming years, but it's very manageable when you have so little debt, such long debt maturities, you retain so much capital and your rents are growing on top of that. Moreover, interest rates are now expected to drop quite significantly over the next year. According to the Fed Watch tool, interest rates should be about 100 basis points lower within a year from now. Therefore, I think it's very likely that NNN REIT will again hike its dividend later this year to keep its dividend growth track record going. As I mentioned earlier, its dividend payout ratio is today historically low and so it can easily afford to hike its dividend again, even if it didn't grow by March in 2024. Right now, it's priced at a near 8% cash flow yield. Out of that, it's paying out a 5.5% dividend yield and it retains the, mo the rest to reinvest in growth. I think that as interest rates are cut, the shares of NNN REIT are going to reprice at closer to a 6 to a 7 7% cash flow yield and that's going to unlock about 20% upside to shareholders and so when you combine here the yield, the growth and the repricing upside you have strong prospects for double digit total returns in the coming years and that's very attractive coming from such a defensive rate. Then the second read I expect to hike its dividend later this year is called Sun Communities. Its secret symbol is SUI. I think that this is a read that I still haven't discussed on this channel, but we own it in our core portfolio at High Yield Landlord. By the way, if you want to access my entire portfolio, you can join my 
my REIT newsletter High Yield Landlord for two week free trial. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. We invested in this REIT about one year ago and while our cost base is a bit lower than today's share price, I think that it's still quite opportunistic today. Sun Communities is one of the leading REITs that specializes in manufactured housing communities and it also owns quite a few RV parks and marinas. These are very desirable real estate investments because of four main reasons. The first reason is that they enjoy very low capex. Typically when you own a manufactured housing community, as the landlord you only own the sites as well as the associated infrastructure. Then the tenant will lease your site and bring their own home onto it, which means that they will also be responsible for the maintenance of their own home. As a result, the landlord owns very steady cash flow and is rarely impacted by major renovation builds. Then the second reason why these investments are very desirable is because there is low and limited supply of them. These days, it's very difficult to get new permits to build additional manufactured housing communities because nobody wants a new trailer park in their backyard. Moreover, there are only a limited number of suitable locations for marinas. The third reason why I like these assets is because affordable housing is always in great demand even if you go into a recession. In fact, in a recession, the demand for affordable housing may even rise and as a result, the rents are very defensive here. And then the fourth and final reason why I like manufactured housing communities as well as marinas and RV parks is because your tenants are typically quite strong. The residents of manufactured housing communities in states like Florida will quite often be retirees who have significant resources as well as a safe and steady pension that they are receiving every month. And then the people who can afford RVs and boats to, to lease at the marina, obviously they're also going to be a higher income people and so the risk of them not paying their rent is quite a bit lower than in many other property sectors. For all these reasons, the same property NOI growth of some communities has consistently outperformed that of other apartment REITs like Mid-America Apartment Communities, Abalon Bay Communities and so on. And I'll put a chart on the screen to show you that. Last year, some communities grew its same property NOI by nearly 10%, which is one of the highest growth rates of all residential REITs. And this year, again, despite the oversupply in the apartment sector, it's still expecting to grow its same property NOI by 5 to 6%, which is quite exceptional when you consider that apartment REITs like Mid-America communities are expecting a slight drop in their same property NOI. Just last month the REIT hiked its dividend by 1% but I think it's quite likely that we'll see a second hike later this year because their cash flow is growing and today their payout ratio is historically low at just around 50%. Moreover the REIT has also exceptionally low leverage with an LTV of just around 25% and so it's not heavily impacted by the surge in interest rates. The dividend yield may seem low here at around 3% but you have to keep in mind again that this is simply because the payout ratio is really low, they use very little leverage and they own mostly lower yielding, higher growth properties that enjoy low capex. So despite the low yield, you can still expect roughly double digit total returns simply from the yield and the growth, which is above average as I mentioned earlier. And then if you add to that a bit of repricing upside as interest rates are cut over the next year, I think that it's quite likely that we'll see 12 to 15% average annual total returns over the coming years. Then before I go into the third read, I wanted to ask you what rate would you like me to cover next on this YouTube channel? Let me know in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to as many of you as possible. And then the third read I expect to hike its dividend later this year is Vici Property, sticker symbol BICI. This is the leading casino net lease street. It owns many trophy assets on the Las Vegas Strip, like the Caesars Palace, MGM Grand, the Venetian, many other of these trophy assets that you may be familiar with. And all of these properties are under long-term triple net leases with steady rent escalations, multi-decade lease terms, and the tenants are responsible for all the property expenses, including even the maintenance. And so the cash flow is highly consistent and predictable. The RE just recently announced its dividend and it didn't hike it and that seems to have disappointed quite a few investors. But what these investors appear to have missed is that historically Vichy has consistently hiked its dividend in the third quarter of each year. And following strong results in 2023 and continued expected growth in 2024, I think it's quite likely that we will see another hike later this year in September or October. Last year, Vichy grew its FFO per share by 11.8%, which was the highest growth rate in the entire net lease sector. And this year, it's expecting another 4% of growth in its FFO per share. And that's despite having to refinance 1 billion of that at higher interest rates. Today, the payout ratio of the rate is about 70% of its AFFO, which is very conservative for triple net lease like Vichy properties. And therefore, I think it's quite likely that we'll see another 4 to 6% dividend hike later this year. 
And that's really all it takes to reach double digit total returns because currently the dividend yield is about 5.7%. You add to that roughly 5% of dividend growth and you're already getting to double digit total returns, assuming that the dividend yield remains intact. Add to that another 10 to 20% of upside as interest rates are cut and you get to 15 to 20% average annual expected total returns and that's in line with its historic averages. So these were three REITs that I expect to hike their dividends later this year, but there are many more. We currently own 24 REITs in our core portfolio at High Yield Landlord. And if you want to access this entire portfolio, you can join High Yield Landlord, which is my REIT newsletter for two week free trial. I'll put a link in the description of this video. And otherwise, once more, if you thought that this content was valuable, I'll really appreciate it a lot if you click the like button as that helps me a lot to grow this channel. And then secondly, also, if you want to learn more about my favorite REIT investment opportunities, click the subscribe button as well, as I plan to post several videos over the coming weeks. Thank you very much again for your support and see you at my next one. Bye bye.